Hello and welcome back to Grim Survival. I am back again with another video at the computer again. As you can see, today is September 3rd, 2019, and this is the second video I will have posted today. First video I posted was a similar topic. We were talking about weather preparations, hurricane prep today, and I really didn't like the first video I posted. I thought I was being rather too cynical in the video, even though I am a very cynical person and I do tend to have a lot of sarcasm in my videos because I find it to be quite entertaining. So anyway, some people find me very offensive and call me rude quite often, but I don't really care because I am quite rude. So yeah, I really don't care. So anyway, point being as I, I just didn't like the video. I really didn't. So I took it down. So yeah, I'm going to talk about weather prep again, try to be a little less cynical and and not express my views on why people live on coastlines quite as much as I did in the previous video. So uh, the big news, of course, over the weekend has been the hurricane that is off the East Coast. It has uh, devastated the Bahamas. I know of five deaths. I checked that stat last night. There was at least five people had died already. Uh, dropped feet of rain. Just, it's insane. Uh, Florida is facing, has been being impacted by it all day, and apparently the hurricane is now moving north along the east coast. Of course, our prayers go out to everyone in the path of the hurricane. I know of over one million people have been told to evacuate. Mandatory evacuations, ordered to evacuate, I believe is what they said. So, uh, mandatory evacuations. A lot of people won't evacuate anyway because they just don't have the means to, they don't have the gas, they don't have the car, they don't have a ride, whatever the reasons being. Some people are just stubborn and they won't leave. Um, which reminds me, and I said this in the previous video, it reminds me of a joke that I once heard by Ron White, who was a member of the Blue Comedy Collar Tour. Ron White was talking about hurricanes, but uh, the premise of the video, or the skit was, a hurricane was coming and some guy was exercising a lot and he was standing out in the wind and he was showing that he could because he was in, in good shape that he could withstand the winds and you know a hurricane uh, tropical cyclone is 75 to 76 mile per hour sustained winds category 5 hurricane is 157 mile per hour sustained, sustained winds and anything in between you know it varies in between category 1 through 5 figure it out if you ever look it up if you care that much um, but the joke being, uh, the guy, it, it, he basically said he could withstand the winds and, and the joke was, it's not what the wind is or that the wind is blowing, it's what the wind is blowing. So if you get hit by a Volvo, it really doesn't matter how many pushups you did that morning or something along those lines. And, and, and I agree with it. I've seen videos of tornadoes putting pieces of straw, just like bedding straw through trees. Not like a plastic straw from McDonald's, but, you know, bedding straw. It's it's a plant. It's plant fibers. It, it goes through a tree. Yeah, I've seen videos of this. And you can see videos of wind doing insane things, too. I, I watch semi-trucks, a whole line of them, just lay over like they were tired from wind. It's just a whole line of them. So, yeah, it it's... It's not that the wind is blowing, so obviously. Um, people have to, I, I worked in construction for many years as a teenager, um, carpenter's helper, basically. I know how to build a house. I know what houses are made out of. I've helped build houses in Texas, so I know along the coastline, Gulf of Mexico area in Texas, so I know what hurricane braces are. Basically, your house is made out of pine. And if you don't know anything about pine, it is the softest, cheapest, easiest to grow wood there is. It's one step above grass. I mean, really, bamboo is stronger than pine, and bamboo is grass. So, it, But the point of the matter is, is your house is really not made very well. It's just not. It's made cheap. And unless you are living in a brick home, I mean, it's pine. You, your house is made of pine. The plywood's pine. The rafters, pro probably pine. It's all just very soft wood and it doesn't take a lot to knock over a house it really doesn't people drive cars through them all the time i mean it, it if you ever ever got mad and put your hand through a piece of drywall or had the privilege of deconstructing a house with a, a sledgehammer you would know just how easy you could take one down and i have deconstructed some houses it's it's fun so uh, anyway, back to the point is your house is not a sustainable shelter against uh, a hurricane or sustained winds like hurricanes or tornadoes. So 
um, when mandatory evacuations come, anybody, mandatory evacuations and ordered evacuations are for people who are not preppers because any prepper or survivalist would have seen this hurricane coming days ago. They would know that it's coming this direction. They would have seen when it went from whatever it was to category five and they would have been gone before the order was given. Hopefully. There are stubborn people, including preppers, very stubborn people, that would stay till the last minute and not leave their house until they had no other choice. Yeah, because, you know, this is where all of our stuff is, right? And we don't want to just up and go with all of our stuff. But the same said stubborn people have children and would load their children up at the first sign of a Category 5 hurricane heading toward us if we lived on a coastline again. And then got them out of there with said bug out bag. Um, weather preparations. Basically, the first prep you should have for any type of adverse weather is a bug out bag. A way to get out because weather, whether it be a hurricane or tornado, a flood, I mean, getting away from it is your best hope of survival. Sometimes the path that you can take to get away from it is your best hope to die because people just don't know a lot of people just can't read the signs around them. Let's just put it that way to be nice about it. Um, if you do bug out, bugging out in a vehicle, obviously, in adverse weather, especially uh, hurricane bug out before the hurricane comes, tornado, same thing, get out of there before it comes. If you wait until after or during, you're stuck. You're not going anywhere. I, this would be common sense to anybody who's been in bad weather, obviously. Um, uh, driving through bad weather. I drive through bad weather all the time. I see some of the dumbest things I've ever seen on the road when it rains. I have seen some of the dumbest things I've ever seen in the rain. I've, I've seen people drive through snow better than rain, quite literally. Um, and I've driven all over the country from east to west, north to south. I've been everywhere, literally been everywhere. And I, I it's always the rain. It's it winds thunderstorms you could have a tornado off in the distance and it's not raining where you are and they're still doing 70 miles an hour down the road but you give somebody a little bit of rain and suddenly they're in a 70 mile per hour speed limit doing 30 miles an hour with their four-way flashers on trying not to get run over by the truck behind them that can't stop anyway yeah that i'm going to try not to be cynical try not to be cynical driving through adverse weather conditions is a big factor i will sh i'll throw a video right around here today this morning of, I, I have two videos and a couple pictures. I'll throw them up on here because I'm at my computer anyway, so I can do that. Um, I drove through bad weather today, severe so thunderstorm, south side of Chicago. I was, I don't remember exactly. I was driving down some country road next to a cornfield. And yeah, and yeah, it, it, it can get pretty rough sometimes. Um, hydroplaning is a factor. It, and hydroplaning is when you get water up under your tires and you lose traction. This is caused by bad tires. If you really think that you're going to lose traction on the road while you're driving, go buy new tires. You need them, probably, because if you feel your car is losing control in weather conditions, get your tires. So, uh, weather, bad weather preps, tires. Make sure your vehicle is good to go. In case you have to bug out, make sure you can. Make sure you have fuel in your vehicle, gasoline, diesel, whatever it is it runs on whatever it runs on make sure it's at least a half a tank at all times this these are basic prepper uh guidelines uh, really it is it's a guideline prepper guidelines is keeping your vehicles full always being ready to go always have your bug up bag ready go over your bug up bag periodically at, at least you know four or five times a year to make sure you know everything's in there sometimes you take things out and sometimes you think that put things back in as of right now being that I just now remembered I have to add my thermal underwear back to my bug back to my get home bag I have a get home bag it, it, it's also a, a bug out bag but it goes everywhere with me so it, it's an everything bag I call it my 200 mile bag because I generally on an everyday basis I'm 200 miles from my house so I need a bag to last 200 miles so for that reason, I have shelter making material in that bag. I can make shelter, I can procure water, I have water.
purification, although I wouldn't trust it. I have a new water purifier on its way. A subscriber has bought it for me, and it should be here tomorrow, actually. So I will be making a video on that. Thank you to the subscriber. I will thank you again when I make a video on the water filter that you have so graciously purchased for me. Thank you. And anyway, I will also be making a video, I'm on the subject of videos, of what is in this, there it is, this jar right here. I will make a video on what is in that jar. Somebody already knows. I'm not telling you who or what. But, you know, if you, you can see it from here, maybe you can guess. I'm not giving you anything if you get it right. All right, so uh, preparation for weather is, is, re, revolves around bugging out nine times out of ten. For things like an earthquake, maybe not. Tornadoes, maybe not. It just depends on how much warning you have. I mean, even if you have a good shelter in a basement, unless you have, you know, a, a, an actual bunker or a bomb shelter, you're not going to stay for a tornado if you have the option to go. You're just not. It's like, okay, the tornado's coming. Let's all go in the basement. Not going to happen. You, you're just not going to stay. That's just how that is. So that kind of preparation is just obvious. If you can bug out, bug out. If you get a evacuation order you probably should evacuate you probably should now, i don't trust the government any much any more than you do but you should probably evacuate when there's a category 5 hurricane looming off the coast um the biggest prep i can say for for hurricanes and this is just going to be hurricanes alone is the best thing you can do to prepare for a hurricane and and this is something you can do either immediately or in a long term but literally and quite literally in my opinion and I have lived through hurricanes. I have been in hurricane areas. I have, I think it was Hurricane Ike was the last one I, I got to go through. But anyway, back to the point. The best thing you can do to prepare for a hurricane is don't live near the coastline. Move away. Move away. Unless you're a professional fisherman, you have no reason to be there. The resources there have been poisoned, in my personal opinion. The oceans are in dire need of a cleansing from human interference. But, yeah, anyway. All right, so um, if, if you, I've seen it before and I've been in it is the traffic, and I've said it in other videos. If you got a if you got like a nuclear explosion, you have two hours to get out of the city. You're probably not going to make it. Hurricanes are a little bit different. You tend to have more than two hours, and you tend to can you tend to get a lot more warning. I mean, you usually have at least a day's warning, and a day is enough time to clear out a, a major city. It really is, if everybody is moving at a steady pace and you know creating their single file lines and remembering what they were taught in kindergarten, which tends to go out the window when you're driving. But you know, police tend to help with that. Um, if if everybody is doing what they're supposed to be doing, you can probably get out. It's going to be a long wait. It's going to take you all day to get away from it, but you eventually will. Um, just be aware. Be Always be aware. Pay attention to the weather. If weather is one of the things you prep for, which it should be because weather happens constantly to everyone, no matter where you are, uh, from drought to floods to hurricanes, tornadoes, and sometimes hurricanes and tornadoes are one and the same and both at the same time. Well, not one and the same, but both at the same time. Hurricanes spawn tornadoes constantly. Um, lightning storms. Lightning storms is a good one. How do you prep for a lightning storm? That's easy. Don't go out in a lightning storm. Duh. Um, uh, so, you know, just don't do it. Don't walk out in a lightning storm and hold my flashlight up and see how bright it is. It's, it's made out of aluminum. It's not conductive, right? Ask the lightning if it's conductive. Ask the lightning if your uh, rubber on the bottom of your shoes is conductive. Ask them. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm at my computer, so that's why I keep looking this way. This is my monitor, and I have notes on my monitor because my tablet went somewhere, and I'm not going to discuss where that is, but let's just to say the, the phone company that had loaned it to me got it back. Different phone, too, by the way. Still a Note 9. I guess that's pretty much all for the video today. I'm talking about uh, my phone now, so yeah, there's no point in continuing. If you don't know how to prepare for you know hurricanes and tornadoes, um, I guess remember what, what I was taught back in elementary school is uh, put your head between your knees and kiss your goodbye.